Welcome everyone to the winter warm up. On the main stage, we have the president of baseball operations, John Mozalak. And Mo, it's always good to see you, sir. It has been a, an interesting off season because you said early you were, you were gonna look for a catcher. You got a catcher, you're happy about that. You've made some other changes within the organization. Let's start off with the most recent move, a new bench coach, Joe McEwing replacing Matt Holliday. Yeah, so first off, welcome. Uh, great to see everybody. Obviously, uh, post-pandemic, it's awesome to have everybody in person. And uh, I think this like sort of new venue is sort of fun. Um, hopefully, you don't have to walk too much back and forth because it is chilly. But um, anyway, thanks for you guys being here today. And I appreciate all the support you guys do for the Cardinals. So yeah, when you think back to the Matt Holiday hire, um, obviously, Skip Schumacher was our bench coach last year. He did an amazing job. He did such a good job. He ended up becoming manager of the Florida Marlins. So good for him. But, um, you know, we hired Matty. Matty wanted to be back with the Cardinals. I think as he started to get closer and closer to spring training, he realized that family matters, his kids matter, and it would just be too much of a commitment to be the bench coach for the St. Louis Cardinals. So I learned about that last Saturday. And, uh, came to my office the following day on Sunday, tried to decide like what we could do, whether we go internal promotion, do we look external? And then uh, I remembered uh, Joe McEwing was available and he's someone that has experience. He's uh, been a bench coach. He uh, obviously has Cardinal legacy. I think all of you may remember him as a player, special guy. And uh, you know, I think as far as pivots go, we got pretty lucky. So. You know, obviously you never want to see, to have to make personnel changes in the second week of January when you got three weeks before you go to spring training. But, you know, net, net, I think we ended up pretty well. You know, I feel like the bench coach role is one of the most important positions in uniform on the ball team. Uh, they do a lot of things behind the scenes. It's a long, arduous job. Uh, and you have to basically be one step ahead of everybody and be able to listen to the manager, be a conduit to the players. I think that job is harder now than I think it's ever been, especially with all the information that they've been provided before they even talk to anybody. Yeah, so when you think about bench coaching job, I would, I would describe it really two ways. One is, it's all about communication. So he does become that conduit between so many different entities, whether it's the medical staff, the coaches, the manager, He's the person that's making sure everybody's on the same page. And I think the other part of, of their job is to actually be like a thought partner, someone that you can have a discussion on strategy, in-game strategy, in-game preparation. And, you know, somebody like Joe McEwing has that experience. And, uh, you know, obviously it's going to be tough shoes to fill with Schu Schumacher, but, you know, net, net, again, I feel pretty good about this one. I want to talk about spring training for a minute. Um, I said before... This may be the most competitive spring training we've had in a long time as far as competition at various positions. I think you're okay at third base. I think you're gonna be all right at first base. I know you'll be okay at catching. And Tommy Edmonds is gonna be a pretty good shortstop. But everything else, it seems like it's gonna be up for grabs. And you've got a lot of guys who are competing. And the good thing about it is, all those guys are homegrown players. Yeah, so if all you guys are coming down to spring training, I think the one thing you get to watch this year is opportunity. Because when you think about the WBC going on, some of our key players or our everyday players won't be in camp. So what ultimately is gonna happen is a lot of these younger players are gonna get major league exposure. And I think the importance of that is it's gonna really create a competitive environment. But if you're sitting in their shoes, it's about the impression you're making in front of your major league staff. And so, you know, for me, I always love to go out to the backfields and watch some of our minor league players play. Now I get to do that in the stadium, which is even better. So, you know, I, I think uh, 2023 will be a really fun camp to watch, whether you're doing it here in St. Louis or you get to go down in Jupiter. But, you know, I think it's gonna be a fun one. Were you surprised at how much money was spent in the off season by teams around baseball? We saw some pretty hefty contracts and while I know that baseball is I didn't notice that. <laughs> I, and I know baseball is making a comeback like other sports since the pandemic. Were you surprised at how much money was spent by so many teams? And, and we had some new teams that got into it as well. 
Yeah, so when you think about like, you know, team spending, I, I, I think the first takeaway is it, it's good for the game, right? Because you think about how things were going over the last couple of years, um, spending was not to pre-pandemic levels. This year, well, they went right by pre-pandemic levels. And, and so, you know, I, I think there's going to be an adjustment on how teams think about their own spending and what they need to do. Um, certainly eye-opening. Uh, the competitive landscape and the free agent market has certainly changed. But, you know, I think the good news for the Cardinals is we had a really good team going into the offseason. We knew we had one specific place we had to address, and that was finding a replacement for Yadier Molina. And as you can imagine, that's not the easiest thing to do. And I think the most striking thing about Mr. Contreras is, is how badly he wanted to do that. And, uh, you know, that really sold all of us on getting that done. And so, you know, were we the most active in the free agent market relative to market? Probably not. But, you know, we answered our problem through the market. You know, one of the things that I think is a plus for you in the ball club is you didn't have to move any players in the offseason. You had to make any trades, which means that once we get into spring training, maybe into the season, somebody can play themselves on or off the roster. And if you need something, you're going to have some assets to be able to move compared to some other teams who may not be in that same position. Yeah, so, you know, we, we talk a lot about prospects and, and, you know, using them to perhaps address needs at your big league club. I think the exciting thing about our club right now is when you're looking at this young group of prospects we, we have coming, Jordan Walkers, Graceffos, McGreevies of the world, these guys are a step away from the big league. So I'm not very inclined to move any of them, right? I think the most important thing to do is allow them to have a successful camp. And, and so, you know, as, as we look at the St. Louis Cardinals model, you know, we've been very fortunate. We've drafted well, we develop well, and, and that really has put this organization in a great spot. And, you know, candidly, that's not me. That's Randy Flores and his staff. That's Gary LaRock and his staff. And when you look at where the St. Louis Cardinals are on the map, we're in a really good spot. Why? We're competing at the major league level, and when you look at where our prospects rank relative to, to industry, we're really a top five organization. So, you know, that's a good place to be. I think last time we were there might have been 2012 or 2013. So it's, it's, uh, it's impressive where the Cardinals are right now. We're going to take some questions from the audience here in just a bit. We have some ladies. If you have a question, just raise your hand, and they'll be more than happy to come over and take, take a couple of questions. We have a gentleman right here in the front. Yeah, congratulations, Mo, first of all, on signing Contreras. I got two quick questions for you. One, I know you've heard this many times. We have no, we have one starter under contract for 2024. I'd like to know if you're going to address any maybe contract extension with maybe Miles Michaelis or something like that. And also, what do you think about the new Cardinals, the new schedule for Major League Baseball, playing every team and, and us two games in London, England? in a second, so interpret that. I'm going to start with the first question. He pointed out, just like the media did, that we really don't have any pitching for next year's sign other than Steven Matz. Yeah. So, uh, what do we do? <laughs> um, obviously, um, a couple ways to think through this, right? We do have some, some players that perhaps we can try to extend. Um, I did mention that we have some guys, uh, young guys that are up and coming that could help fill that void. And, and of course, we always have next off season. But in the meantime, um, it is something that's on our radar. We're very well aware of what we have to do. And uh, hopefully this time next year when I'm sitting with you, we have five competent starters all lined up. So wish me luck. Uh, and the other thing, you never have enough pitching, right? Well, every time I think we do, we don't. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I say that every year. When you go to spring training, you look at all these arms and you say, oh, man, we're loaded. And then come July, we say, we got to find some pitching. It never fails. It really doesn't. So uh, obviously, we've got some homework. Second question was? What was the second question? How we play every team in Major League Baseball this year. What do you think about that kind of schedule and the two games in London against the Cubs? So obviously, obviously it's a different schedule, right? Um, we play less games in the Central. We now obviously have exposure to all uh, 29 other clubs. 
I think the biggest like strategic change in all of that is really going to come to like your your game prep. In other words, like your advanced scouting and and how you think about that. So we're probably going to have to add resources when you think about like our video department and how we prepare, because obviously we're not going to have as 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 repetition with the, the National League Central as we've had in the past. But I think that's the biggest change. But ultimately, I think we'll get through that. Thank you. Do you, um, will you add more scouts now because you have to scout the whole league or how's that going to work? Because not only is the schedule going to be challenging, I think, and we, you and I talked about this, rainouts, make updates, things of that nature are going to be even more costly because the tiebreaker, you don't have the tiebreakers anymore. It's what your record is because you play everyone. Yeah, I suppose that's a, that was a mouthful, Mike. Um, <laughs> but let's start with uh, adding scouts. I don't think so. I think we'll be fine. Um, and in terms of like rainouts or potential rainouts, I do, I do think you're going to end up seeing more opportunity where you're going to have to do a split double header the very next day because a lot of times you're going to be playing in a series where the team's not coming back to town. So that's just something that we're going to have to think through. Hopefully the sun shines and we have a glorious year. <laughs> I'm having a hard time hearing questions, so maybe we should stand up. And yeah. Get a little closer. Yeah, so the question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, basically, he asked about the rule changes and how it's going to affect how the strategy works, not to mention the players that it may impact. So, for you, what rule change are you anxious to see most? Well, I think we're all in favor of a quicker game, right? Does anybody object to the clock? Uh, Cardinals hate change. Um, I myself am in favor of it, but that's because I go to 162 a year. Um, the three hour and 15 minute game, unless it's compelling, is long. Um, but you know, net net, I think, I think the biggest factor is two things. I think we always refer to it as the pitch clock, but really it's a clock. And so I think hitters are gonna be the ones that are most directly affected on that. When you see like, especially when you see like young players coming up that have used it in the minor leagues, it's been pretty seamless. But I think some of the veteran hitters, when they step out of the box, go through their routine, and then get back, well, the clock's on. So they better pick up that pace. I think that'll be the biggest change. And I'll be really curious to see what happens with the no shift. Um, I'm hearing rumors that you might start seeing five person infields where you see two men outfields. And so when you're thinking about that sort of setup, then it is like what's your personnel look like and how can you accomplish it? I do think the one interesting fact if the Cardinals do go down that path is we do have guys that can actually stand in the dirt and in the grass, which, you know, is if that's something we can leverage, we might be able to take advantage of. Thank you. This gentleman right here. Okay, it was a two part question. First part was pretty simple. What's going to happen with uh, Albert Pujols with his um, service contract with the Anaheim Angels? We'll start with that one first. Um, I really think that's up to Anaheim to determine how he can be used, what he can do for the St. Louis Cardinals. But my understanding is if we invite him to opening day, they would give him permission to come here. So fingers crossed, right? Okay, part two of the question is what's going to happen with Yadier Molina and Albert Pujols, and will their numbers be retired next year? I don't know. But shockingly, I'd be shocked if they're not retired at some point, right? I mean, two iconic players, not only will they wear the red jacket one day, but they'll be in Cooperstown. So historically, when you get to Cooperstown, you get your number retired. We'll get one more from the crowd. This gentleman all the way in the back here feel about working for the Rockies compared to, to the Cardinals? The Rockies compared to the Cardinals? Rockies compared to the Cardinals? You work oh, for the Rockies. Oh, the whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's, that's going back that, a that long was, time. That was a, long, that was a lot of paychecks ago. So, dear, uh, yeah, my experience with the Colorado Rockies obviously goes back 30 years. Uh, games changed tremendously on, on what you're seeing today. I think now with my time with the Cardinals, even that's been an evolution. Um, you know, when you think back to, to being named general manager back in 07, that was right when you're starting to see the, the, the change in how people think about decision making. And analytics were becoming, 
you know, they weren't even really on the forefront of that where we are today. And so, you know, I think the, the one thing I look back at my career and the thing I have enjoyed the most is, is being able to experience that growth. I think anytime you're in a career or a job where you feel like you're learning, growing, you're pretty lucky. And, you know, I think back to my time in this game and I see the changes that have happened. It's been, uh, it's been really remarkable. And you think about how the game is, the decision tree is done today versus what it was, you know, 25 years ago. You know, it's, it's, it's changed drastically, but so's the money. The game's grown and I've been lucky to be a part of it. And uh, to sit here in a room like this today, I don't know if that would have happened 30 years ago. So, um, you know, I think I'm grateful to be a part of baseball. I think baseball is a special game. Still think it's the greatest game in the world. And uh, I think all of us that get to live it every day love it. So thank you guys. One final question for oh. you. As we have fans here today that may come down to spring training, what's the one thing you are looking forward to seeing? Because as I mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a lot of competition for different positions. What's the one thing you would suggest people pay attention to if they come down, if they follow spring training and certainly going into the season? Well, I, I kind of touched on it. It's an opportunity to see players like Jordan Walker, Mason Wynn, Graceffo, McGreevy, to name a few that are going to get an opportunity to be playing in the stadium and not on the backfield. I think there are some questions that the big league club still needs to answer. What are we going to have with Paul DeYoung? Uh, someone asked me about that question earlier in terms of like, what do we think of him at shortstop? I'm like, I don't care about him at shortstop. I care about how he hits. And so, you know, ultimately there's going to be a lot of questions that we get answered over the course of that. WBC is going to give us opportunity to take a sneak peek at our future. And so if you get to go down there, that's what you should be looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of baseball operations, John Mazalot. Thanks, guys. Have fun today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye.